This week we're going to put a root pass in a 6 inch Schedule 80 pipe coupon. This is in a 6G position. Very typical, very common test. It's the plus or minus 5, 0 to 8th inch land, gaps 16th to an 8th. Might need closer to 70. And if they're going by the, the specs that I read on the UA, on the UA PDF, you got to, if it says to adjust your amps to accordingly, where you can use at least 75 amps with no problem. And this this is the time to kind of gauge that when you're putting a tack somewhere, and it's not going to be the same. Machines make a lot of difference. That's why pipeliners and rig welders are so particular about you know using their Lincoln SA200 versus a Trailblazer or something like that because the arc makes a big difference to make a good a good transition, and that looks something something like that. Also, using a really thin grinding wheel, if something closes up with you, it'll let you stick it in there and open open the gap back up and get you out of a bind. And when you light up on a tack, the way I do it is I kind of long arc it to begin with and get that tack heated up and then gradually tighten the arc up and then when I get to the end, just jam it in there pretty tight and get that keyhole going. Now, I've got the rod. I'm kind of scooping out metal as I, as I go forward. I can kind of feel it. I can kind of feel it scooping out metal. And then I go back into the puddle and try to keep it pretty tight. And here I'm tying in to a, a tack and I'm kind of pushing that keyhole right into the tack. And then I'm going to come out on the land, I mean on the bevel, on the middle of the tack. And here I'm lighting up again, long arc it a little bit, and then dive on in there. Nice and close, get the keyhole going. And this is a little bit wider gap here, so keyhole wants to uh, kind of open up that I made. But it's not out of hand either. It's definitely, definitely uh, within within the limits, within the scope. And here, this is a little bit wider gap here, so I'm actually almost making a kind of a small oval shape, just kind of tying in there, kind of backwards like that, where I can twist my wrist and get a favorable angle on it. And you keep an eye on your gap; it's a little tighter. That's the time to bump it up a little bit. I kind of like the way that looks right there, the way that's going in. It's keyholing. I'm able to, to jam the rod in there pretty tight and kind of just scoop out metal and then, you know, it lets the it lets the puddle chill momentarily while I'm... Now this is a little hot right here. The gap was a little wide. You can handle some variation like that without having to stop and, and change your amperage, but only to an extent. And a lot of it depends on the the, uh, the type welding machine you're using. Now, for this section here, I showed I'm showing you this. This is this is on the ragged edge of being too hot, and I'm having to kind of make circles and come up on the come up on the walls of the pipe to kind of cool the puddle off. And unfortunately, it's on the top. You can get away with a little of this on the top a lot easier than you can on the bottom. But now it's keyholing out quite big, and so I'm pushing that keyhole right into the tack. I'm just moving the keyhole along, so I'm making sure to, to burn in and completely fuse into the tack weld. And finally, it closes up right there. But like you saw, it was a little hot in places, a little, little heavy, a little wide probably. But uh, for the most part, it, it went in pretty much okay. And uh, hopefully, hopefully it gives somebody some help that's getting ready to go take this test. Uh, I guess up next will be uh, the 7018 fill and cap. That might take a couple of weeks to finally get around to doing all that. But meanwhile, we'll see it with something next week. Thanks for watching.